we it went from the Philippines because he dominated the customer service thing. I was like, dang, I need to mirror that with my developers in India. And so, yeah, when we went to Pune, the whole thing is they coding at a level. They was already talking about AI then. And the Indians been on AI from a development perspective since way back then. And so we was like, man, what, what's this new stuff? And, you know, so it was easy because now if they had CRM kind of kind of companies, it was easy to go buy them because they hadn't integrated any of that yet. I'm doing the, 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 the business in a box, right? Mm -hmm. And you're helping me run the agency. Do I have, are you teaching me how to go get the VAs or you have some already? No, so I teach you of course how to go and hire your VAs, but you can have my team do all the recruitment for you. So I you see. ain't got to recruit nobody. I recruit the best VAs, all you got to do is get the clients. I recruit the best VAs for you. I pair the VAs up, we'll do the onboarding, we'll do the meet and greet, we'll let them meet your clients for you. And of course I get paid on the back end for every VA I recruit. So you ain't got to have a recruitment team. You ain't got to worry about that. Let us handle that for you. Right? Mm. Let us send out the, all the VAs to you. Let us interview the right ones, make sure they're trained. Let us do the onboard between your client and the VA. Let us do the whole process. You just get the client. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We find dope people that did dope stuff, okay? We have uh, two very, very special entrepreneurs today. Proven success entrepreneurs, not just talk about it, and been an entrepreneur before the pandemic. Kenneth, what's up? What's going on, King? Man, I'm good. We got King Collier in the building and uh, a Social Proof cousin. We got Derek Harper in the building. Bam, bam, I'm here. What's happening? Man, I'm so happy to be here, bro. Uh, because you, for one, and I want to know how this relationship works, but uh, you've done something that I just cannot figure out, bro. And I got I got one. So you, you have a company that helps people hire VAs, correct? Yep. You explain it. You explain it. I think I'm saying it wrong. Yep. You help them have one or you get them one or what? So I help them hire... VAs are virtual assistants for the team. We train them, we manage them, um, and we just help them delegate the tasks and free up more time for themselves and their business. So anything related to hiring VAs, training, management, we do it all. Gotcha. And how'd you start? So we started back in, uh, what, 2017. I actually started the company without even trying to start the company. The first thing I did was trying to hire my own VA, my mm -hmm. own team. Yep. Next thing you know, I started helping my friend hire Brandon, how you dare, how you next thing you know, it turned into a business. And I wasn't even trying to, right? So you you hired a VA, one VA or you had multiples? I hired one VA, right? So back in um back in 2017, I was at the time I was running a successful credit repair company, mm -hmm. right? Had over 600 plus clients. I was killing it, right? Um, and a situation happened to me that kind of changed my life, right? That's how I actually got into what I'm doing now. December 4th. On my son's 10th birthday, I found out that his, his mom had just passed away. Oh, right? no. Early in the morning on his 10th birthday. And here I was now trying to learn how to be a single dad to my son now, um, plus trying to manage a company with 600 plus clients, right? And you know, your, your, your clients don't care about nothing, none of your personal yeah, situations. Just, sure. hey, what's going on with what I paid you for, right? Um, and at the time, I was going through a period of grief going back and forth to counseling with my son, clients still texting me, still calling me. Right? I'm still having to be the one to answer all the phone calls and texts. Why trying to be a good dad? Why trying to grieve? Why trying to get through this whole situation I was going through, right? Uh, and I just went through a period where I was just burnt out, right? I didn't have a team. It was just me dealing with all my clients, right? I knew how to build a company. I had systems, but I didn't have a team, right? Yeah. Um, so these 600 clients, you... You onboarded them all yourself and were servicing them yourself? Well, onboarded them all myself, servicing them myself, and my son, mom, was helping me. Helping me. She was the one that was kind of helping me get through some of the clients. And um, when she passed away, I was stuck, right? Grieving, burnt out, going through entrepreneurship, uh, burnt out, depressed. And I went through a period of where uh, I went through mental breakdowns, right? And I had to be hospitalized for like a couple of weeks. Um, and throughout that whole situation, my business continued to go down. Clients was charging back. Um, my business was just folding, right? Uh, and throughout that situation, um, all I thought about was like, damn, how can I fix this when I come up out this situation when I get my mind right? Um, and the first thing I thought about, like, okay, I need a team, right? I need to hire somebody. In 2017, nobody was talking about VAs, virtual assistants, That's a none of that. <laughs> Right. So I had to figure it out on my own, right? So I went online, went to Upwork, hired my first VA. 
Um, and for then, what? What was the job you were having? You were trying to hire them for? Um, I was trying to hire some. I was trying to get my company back going. Right, so I needed somebody for customer service, and I needed somebody just to help me do the spewing and everything yeah. else related to the company. Right, um, and I hired my first VA on Upwork. It didn't work out right. You know, I didn't know how to manage a team. I didn't know how to yeah. um, onboard and train the person in the right way. Right, um, so it failed. So I hired a second VA. It didn't go right, and after that, I was like, man, let me just fly over to the Philippines and just do what I see everybody else doing. All these big brands and big companies doing. And in 20, early 2018, me, Derek, and Brandon, we just flew up to the Philippines. That was the idea? <laughs> Go that to was, the Philippines? That was the idea. That, I promise you, that was the idea. What was, how did you know and, the, how did you know they was over there in the Philippines, though? And here's the thing. When I hired the, when I hired the second VA, she, um, she called me on FaceTime. And she was at a university in the Philippines. And when I looked at, of course, I thought the Philippines was a third world um, uh, uh, country, right? It's so. Not. It is, but it's considered that. But when you're there, it don't, in most places, it look like over here in the U.S. Gotcha. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, you got all your big companies from Chase, Xerox, Xbox, uh, Netflix, everybody's over in the Philippines. Right? Um, and I saw that on FaceTime. And I was like, man, this is not what I thought the Philippines was. Yeah. Right? And she was like, hey, my friend need a job. This person need a job. I'm like, dang, okay. Let me fly over to the Philippines. And at the time, like I said, nobody was teaching about VAs online, right? So that was my introduction to it and my way of learning and figuring it out. And we flew over to the Philippines. Dang. And, and that's how it actually started. But we flew with the goal of trying to hire for ourselves, right? Because yeah. we couldn't find nobody to hire VAs for us. Nobody was, was really doing it. Um, and that was it. We flew over to the Philippines and we stayed over there for 30 days. Wow. Yo, you know what's <laughs> crazy? Because I remember... I remember when Brandon went over there the first time because he's my, my business partner and he's like, yo, I'm going to the Philippines and I just couldn't understand like what he was doing but I thought he was just recording for you. Well, yeah, so I had, because I was running a credit repair university yeah. and um, I had started coaching him on the credit side yeah. and I had 30 American employees at that point yeah. and so what it was is the last credit repair university, um, Brandon was shooting it yeah, and uh, Ken was speaking there so I was like, well, whatever we make, let's just uh, put it towards the trip and let's just, just take it over there. So we made like 100000 in that train and then we was like, well, we're going to stay for a whole month. So hold on, why why were you going to the Philippines? <laughs> well, because I had 30 American employees. and um, So the whole trip for all three of y'all is go over there to find employees. On the ground. To take jobs away from the United States. No, nah, because, <laughs> well, I, and, and I'm glad you said that because when you got people who – they can't find babysitting and they always, and, and you got to understand too, when people who look like us work for us and we become millionaires in front of them, um, it's no longer, I want to be an employee. It's I'm inspired to be you now. Yeah. And so it, it, we needed a culture shock there because we understand if going over there, they don't look at us like, Oh, that's my cousin. That's, that's my homeboy. That's, you know, it, it's a different level of respect. So yeah. they don't come in and just want to be the boss now when they don't look like you. But when they look like you, I had a, I had 30 people who looked like me who basically didn't want to really work for me. And so it, it's hard for them to watch you make money without them wanting more. Yeah, how do you manage that, though? Because actually, I was having a conversation with somebody. So I, have a v, I got a VA, and he is killing it, first off. And he just sent me a DM, like, y'all want to do this. But he, he posts on my YouTube, Facebook, and our Facebook just got over like a hundred thousand uh, followers on it because he's been consistently posting. And when I've had people posting on the page, like the the page from the United States, one they charge like four times, right? And the work isn't as uh, um, not as focused or not as passionate about doing a good job. Their right. goal is to get the job done. Yeah. So how do you? They don't you, protect your brand. They don't look at your brand like their brand. Like when you when you hire somebody from the U.S., they're looking at it as just a job. They're looking at it as I'm gonna run the bag up. Let me get a hundred clients. You just a customer. You just a person. But when you hire somebody from the VA, you can get rid of a. So I can replace a customer service agent in the U.S. who making twenty dollars an hour for a customer service team, because four people can do way more than what one person does. If, if all they're doing is customer service and all they're doing is answering the phone and do onboarding, they don't have to do anything else, then they're going to be really good at it. 
Mm. And then, you know, so now one American, you're going to have to depend on them doing four jobs. They're going to take the path of least resistance. Whatever the easiest job is, they're going to resort to it. Just give that to somebody. Golly. So. How, how many VAs y'all got? Because y'all, y'all, <laughs> hold on. Y'all run the company together? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, no. I'm an investor. You invested? He, he's the man Ooh, for the VA okay, staffing. Okay, he's got the right. biggest VA staffing company owned by a black person in America. How many people are on your, how many VAs do you hire? Right now I got about close to like 213, like in my total company that I pair up with different entrepreneurs. And then outside of that, just the, the ones that I have, outside of that I help people hire VAs that don't work directly for me. So I've hired thousands and thousands of virtual assistants. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Hold on. So 200 and something VAs that you like farm out to other entrepreneurs. Yeah. So you pay them. You pay the VA. The VA goes to work for the person, and that person pays you a little more than you, what you would be Definitely. paying them. That's Definitely. So, so when we was over in the Philippines, right, one of the first hires we made on the ground, it was a, a – a guy, he worked for a university in the Philippines as a professor. As a professor, he had a master's degree. What? Only making three dollars an hour. Yeah. No working, way. Working, working yeah. as a professor in a university in the Philippines with a master's degree, speak perfect English, only making three dollars an hour. And I interviewed him. And I offered him a job for five dollars an hour. He quit his job the next day to come work for me. <laughs> how long? Tell him how long he been there though. He was there for almost three years. Loyal. Right, the next for almost day. three a years. Master's degree, a master's degree, uh, and, and the thing about it, most people in most Filipinos have some type of college education or college degree, right? Um, most of them don't take the education for granted, so they they go to school, right? Um, Why are they only charging three dollars an hour though, bro? Oh. The, the, the minimum wage in the Philippines is only a dollar twenty five cent an hour. That's the minimum wage in the Philippines. The cost of living is super super low. <laughs> and a lot of times they don't regulate that minimum wage, so some of them work for fifty cent, seventy, you know, seventy five cent. So when you give them five dollars, it's like I've arrived. I've arrived, and for us, some of us feel bad because we feel like, hey, we only paying them four five dollars an hour, but to them, you've upgraded their whole situation, <laughs> their whole they life by condos. giving them five dollars an hour, right? They able to go and get condos, cars, feed their whole family. They living good for five dollars an hour. I imagine giving that person six, seven dollars an hour. How they gonna act and how loyal they gonna be, right? Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. So <laughs> this guy's got a master's degree. You hire him for five dollars, and he was doing the customer service job. He was doing he was doing customer service originally, but I was training him to be an ops manager, right? Okay. Um, yeah. So he came in. He he already was used to leading. Um, perfect English, great communication skill, and he was he was driven, right? Yeah. Um. So he worked about the first year as a customer service, and then I upgraded him to, to my ops manager. Paying more than the five dollars? Yeah, I definitely. How much does he make now? Five dollars. He, he's no longer with me now, but um, at his peak, he was making about eight dollars an hour. Why is he no longer with you? Um, he moved on. He so started getting money. <laughs> it was the move on, which is they could be a work. problem. Yeah, you no, feel me? Good. Like, yo, you if the minimum wage is a dollar or some change, you're paying three. Five, six, seven. They become investors. They start probably investing in thirty dollar now rental properties. Now I stuff. do have a lot of VAs with Airbnbs in the Philippines. They have small grocery stores. They have um, bacon, bakery shop. Yes, I have a few of them with rental properties and Airbnbs. Like they take their money and invest. I even took some of my money and invest with them in different properties in the Philippines. Airbnbs. All right. So how did you start? I'm still stuck on this first trip. <laughs> You find some VAs. You find some VAs. Brandon finds some VAs. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. yeah. We we all interview. We we set up shop and um, interview. And we we, we put purpose. a lease. Hold on. We put a lease on a building. In the Philippines. In the Philippines before we flew over there with with, with the person that. Why are y'all doing this? I don't understand. Like, I'm, I'm never even thinking. Listen, the, the, I, I find two VAs that mm -hmm. don't work out. Let me go to the Philippines. But before I do, let me get a building. Yeah. So the person, I had the person on the ground over there working, right? That was already working for me. Mm -hmm. And I knew right now we're used to people working remotely and virtual. Back in 2018, working remotely and virtual wasn't a thing. The yeah. pandemic wasn't here. So everybody was used to going into a facility, working um, there, they wasn't used to working remotely or virtual like we do now. So I thought that was the only way to do it was get a building. 
in 2018 so they can come into the office and actually work. How much is the building? The bill, I think it was like four or five hundred dollars a month. It wasn't much. Oh. You know, and it was like on the 20th floor. With, with all the bills. 20th floor in the high rise, glass all around <laughs> for four or five. How much was it? It was like less than five hundred dollars a month. Well, it came included with all the utilities and stuff like right at seven. All right. So was the goal to create a VA company or just to find a VA? No, nah, that was gonna be just a work office. Okay. <laughs> so so y'all leave after 30 days um, and you have an idea to build a VA company. Yeah, so I started the idea while I was older. I was like, I hired one for, we, Derek hired, Brandon hired, a few other friends. Like, hey, man, I started telling everybody, hey, I need a V, I need a V. I started helping a few people. And, and after that, I was like, damn, I got a whole business. So I started building the business out probably about the third or fourth week over there, and I flew back. Um, and that's when I just started building from there. Got you. But you were just like, yo, I got my VAs that I'm going to work with. I'm good. No, nah, I, I was like, I need a bigger building. So we had to go back. But you, but like your you. thought wasn't, let me get a VA company. Let me just, I just need them for mine. Yeah, staff. so I needed them for mine because we was growing like crazy. Like yeah. at that time we had like 3,800 credit repair clients. And I needed a team, like a huge team. Yeah. And I started getting rid of the American people who was rated like three and below yeah. and replacing them with teams. So by the time we went back over there, I had like 65 VAs. There, just part of the customer service uh, department. Wow. Yeah. So and 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 <laughs> and not just the Philippines. Again, the building in the Philippines. When we went back the second time, we made additional trip to India, and you probably see it see it on our on my page. We end up trying to do the same thing in India with the development side, right? We were just going crazy, like just trying some new. So we flew over to India, and that was Derek's idea. He wanted to create a, have a development team in India. So we flew over to India the second time when. We, we went to the Philippines and we booked an extra trip from the Philippines to Pune, India. And we started a process of scouting a building so he can build it out a development team in India. When you say development team, what do you mean? My a tech company. Tech company. <laughs> Got it. So now that started me buying tech companies because I had the developers there. Yeah. So oh. it was easy to buy software and tech companies and just take over because now my overhead lower. So I was, that's how I even got into flipping businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, so just. We, it went from the Philippines because he dominated the customer service thing. I was like, dang, I need to mirror that with my developers in India. And so, yeah, when we went to Pune, the whole thing is they coding at a level. They was already talking about AI then. Really? Yeah, they was talking. And then, you know, like, they was just, oh, well. And the Indians been on AI from a development perspective since way back then. And so we was like, man, what, what's this new stuff? And... You know, so it was easy because now if they had CRM kind of kind of companies, it was easy to go buy them because they hadn't integrated any of that yet. And so then that's how that automation company uh, formed before the pandemic. Same price scale, same pay scale. No, they cheaper. It's cheaper. So the people in India, my, all that? my developers are like a thousand bucks a month. And we talking about if I got the same developer here, I probably have to pay them like maybe one twenty, one thirty a year. Easy. Yeah, and then some like. You know, head developers, especially if there's full stack, they they want like equity in the company. Yeah. So I'm like when you get them like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month, and you just start getting creative with them, like they earn their own money. So you can build me an app, no problem. Huh? Nah, that's too easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't personally, but yeah, yeah, I can delegate it. But yeah. Wow. It's time to stop running your business like a hustler, like just somebody that's trying to go get some money and run your business like an actual business owner. You know how that happens? Your business hires you. Even though you started the business, the business hires you and you put yourself on payroll. And that business has payroll for other people. Now, those other people might be your spouse. It could be your kids. I pay my daughter $12,000 a year because that $12,000 that I pay my child isn't taxed. So that money is either going to go to your child or it's going to go to the government. You decide. I'd rather keep it in my house. My wife is on payroll. You need to run your business like a business owner. Most of you are taking money from your business and you take that money and you pay your house loan. You pay your rent. You pay your car. For one, that kind of stuff will land you in jail. But two, you want to grow and lay a strong foundation for your business to grow on, okay? So go to adp.com forward slash social proof. When I signed up for ADP to get this process going, I had to pay $250 for administration, setup fee, all these costs. I talked to my ADP sales rep and they said they will waive it for you. 
If you go to adp.com forward slash social proof, meaning you can start this process for free, absolutely free, no catches, no hooks. Go to adp.com forward slash social proof. Now is the time to run your business like an actual business owner. I am on ADP. I do the same thing and it helps my books by tax time. I'm not behind. I'm not trying to get everything because in the process of them making the payroll, they take out the taxes, they structure everything. And at the end of the year, voila, you give that information to your CPA. Okay. Go to adp.com forward slash social proof. One more time, adp.com forward slash social proof. Set it up for free. Let's go. Okay. So, but when, at what point did you have Derek invest in the company? How'd that happen? Now he invested in front of front of air from the very uh, beginning. From the very beginning. You How, know, much you uh, How much you put up? How much you put up? It was it was more so <laughs> equity. I think he probably put up like twenty five. It wasn't much, like twenty five grand. But the rest of it was was his his relationships, um, the the business ventures he already had, and and um, his coaching and everything else. So gotcha. That was the that was the biggest part that I needed. Outside I didn't want him worrying about the money. Yeah. Worry about the operation. Yeah. Like, go, because he... he uh, 25000 go a long way with a yeah. VA company. Over there? But, well, one of the biggest things is I knew what what he was going through, what he was coming out of. Like, I didn't need... You know, he had to bury... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, the rebound period. Like, people don't understand the grief that goes in. You know, because uh, I was yeah, personally sure. called that morning crying. And I'm like, man, what the hell wrong with you? And it was like 6.30, maybe 7 o'clock. Yep. And I don't even get up there early. I was like, why are you calling like that? So, like, the investment wasn't just on business then. It was like, dang, I'm watching my boy fold. You know what I'm saying? So, it was like, well, whatever you need. Got and it, so, it. it wasn't like, a, oh, I'm going to give you this to invest. It's like, bro, whatever we need to put up, I got you. You just focus on that. Gotcha. And he took it and, and you know. Just like man, when you got a clear mind and you ain't got to worry about that, you can go build something great. For sure. And yeah. he paid for the trip and everything. The crazy part what part is that was my first time ever out the country when I flew to the Philippines really? the first time. My first time ever on a flight out the country <laughs> and the end of flying to the Philippines and starting a whole damn business out of it. That's my first crazy. time ever on a plane out the country <laughs> and that, it's to the Philippines. So we almost went to jail too. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That trip was funny. That's a whole episode just talking about the stuff so that happened on that trip. Your first year in business, do you know the revenue? The first year in business, uh, I think I probably did like 50000 I ain't 50, do much. I was still learning. Um, I made a whole bunch of mistakes, right? And like I was what? the f- <sighs> man, I had so many um, influential clients and, and really successful entrepreneurs that was trying to do business with me, but I was still learning the game. Um, so I kind of I think I kind of uh, brought them in as clients too early well, like, while I was still learning. Um, but, yeah, I was just still learning, man. I, and, and, I, and I was really, like, one of the only ones that was doing it. So I was attracting a lot of successful people, mm-hmm. but I was still learning. didn't really know what I was really doing like that. Yeah. And then um, they, were still in the, they were still in the VA, too. Yeah, That's what they thing. were doing. They were still in the VA. <laughs> He's trying to be political. Oh, so he's trying to. The influencers are still in the VA. One, I'm paying you. You're paying them. But I talk to my VA like, yo, just work for me. How much he paying? So I get a little more that. Yeah. So if I bring a VA in, I'm giving them three dollars an hour, right? That's probably about six hundred dollars a month. If I give them three dollars an hour, I'm charging the client ten dollars an hour, right? So I'm making a seven dollar profit off every hour, (laughs) right? Um, So what would happen is they will find out how much I'm really paying the VA. And they would say, hey, instead of you working for, for Ken for $3 an hour, let me give you $6 an hour, right? And you doubling yeah. somebody's income. So sure. it's just like if I'm making 100000 you offer me a job of 200000 Doing the same exact thing. More than likely, hey, I'm probably going to say, okay, I got to go. And that was the same thing the VA was doing. So how do you, <laughs> how do you prevent that now? So contracts, uh, a lot of NDAs. I'm actually registered in the Philippines mm-hmm. um, fully now. So... Um, they don't really do that as as much. Um, the, the the VAs don't really leave us as much because we can report you to the Department of Labor now. Uh, blacklist you. We can do a whole lot of stuff that I couldn't do at first. Gotcha. Right? Um, and when most people that aren't registered in the Philipp- Philippines and they hire your VAs virtually on their own, the VA know they can get away with a lot of stuff. They know the contracts don't stand, the NDAs don't stand because you're over here and they're over there, right? Um, but by me being registered over there, it's less likely that they do any of that stuff that they used to do when I first started. Got it. So that's one way. Um, 
two, being just more open um, and conversing better and, and talking to and really lean, lean my VAs a whole lot better. So if they're having issues as far as money, need more pay, they're able to come to me and talk to me. Yeah. Um, um, hey, do they ask you for more money a lot? Will. Not one guy. He's always he always need an advance or something. Like. Yeah, yeah. They will. Well, it, 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 you gotta. They're coming out of a uh, just poor environment, and you know, like one of the things, if they go to the hospital and they don't pay their bill, they can't leave the hospital. Mm-mm. Like it's not like what? us. Yeah, no, yeah. you can't go unless you got the money to be able to pay for what you're getting treated for. Yeah, or you'll be stuck there. Yeah, it's so, like yeah, like a jail. Yeah, so like one of the things that if he provides insurance, yeah. so you know, like if you. The people who were trying to do that, the influencers who were trying to do that by saying, well, I'm going to double your salary, then they'll come back crying like, oh, my God, my VA did this. It's because what you just did, though, is now you can't even report them to the Department of Labor. Mm-hmm. Now, because, like, I had a guy who called himself was going to delete all my files, not realizing if we had Google Drive, I can restore them. Mm-hmm. He deleted them and just knew he was going to be good. But then Department of Labor got him and he blacklisted. Now you're like, oh, my God, can you undo it? Oh, wow. Because we registered over there. Wow, okay. Um, so you take that protection away when you try to steal. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I figured this thing out. So it's been how many years? Six. <laughs> uh, Almost five years, five pretty much. Years. Going on for, going About on for how five. much yeah. revenue does the company do? So right now, right now, um, last year, I think I just did close to like 2.2. 2. 2. That's just on the staffing side. That's not including the really? other ways I use VAs to outsource and, and do other stuff. They're just from that one company. 2.2 2 million? Yeah. That's light, though. About how much did you have to pay out, though? Um, Probably about close to like 35, 35% I had to pay out. But now that's low last year. reason it's kind of low because I started um, a program where I teach and help other people start their own VA staffing agency, whole business in the box program. Mm. So what I started doing was, and here's the thing, people come to me from di- for all different industries needing VAs, whether it's podcasting, accountants come needing bookkeepers, um, truckers come needing dispatchers, and just different industries. And I couldn't serve or train VAs for all different industries. So what I started doing was teaching other people to start their own agency and specializing in a particular niche. So if a client come to me and say, hey, Ken, I need a dispatching VA, I would send them to one of my uh, mentees that specialize in the trucking industry, right? So I kind of lost a lot of clients. Not really lost, I passed a lot of clients to my mentees last year versus taking a bunch of them on. Got um, it. Dang, so, that's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. Yeah, first off, y'all good. You know what I mean? Like, we gonna build this thing together, okay? So we're not gonna get no VAs. I just wanna let y'all know. But y'all gonna have to get some VAs to do some other stuff, okay? So, yeah. All right. I'm gonna show, I could t- I'm gonna tell you, two VAs, right? literally made i'm talking about on autopilot made me like 2.5 last year doing what so my indian va right built a whole um and and it's crazy right so they he, they built the whole website template out for like or doctor's offices uh you know restaurants food trucks think of an industry they did it fitness everything so now remember they make a thousand dollars a month right and their whole goal is to just build templates all day. And then my other VA, who's in the Philippines, literally just goes and Googles like the top 10 doctor's office in Atlanta, Chicago, New York, top 10 seafood, soul food restaurants, Chicago, New York, orthodontist, dentist, doctors, or whatever, pet walker, whatever, right? You never run out of people to look for. And then once they run that list, they'll look at who has good websites or not, right? And then now they would go and just do the research on the ones who don't have websites or who have garbage websites and get my developers just to rebuild it. They already got the templates. They rebuild it. And then now, let's say you're the orthodontist and you got a Facebook page and boom, you look on Facebook and it's a link in your inbox to your website that's updated all bells and whistles and everything. So now instead of saying, hey, can we build your website? You're saying, how much is going to cost me to get that? Two thousand a pop. All right. And then now that's on autopilot. So now I don't really have to do anything. The developer's building it. They pushing it in the inbox, doing the research. And, you know, you're selling five, six of them a day. Whoa. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, and I don't, I, that's, that's a business that makes me millions that I don't have to do nothing with, just with two VAs. This is what I need, okay? <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. So y'all know I am heavy in the podcasting space, right? How can we create a company? He already got a VA business in a box for podcasters. Really? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, Don't sell that to nobody here, though. <laughs> Y'all laughing. No, I'm, I let's, mean, let's just take that out of the, oh, the service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. Okay, yeah. sorry. No, oh, all. so the investment we're going to talk about. Okay. Yeah. So Come most on, people, most people don't realize, man. <laughs> you can use VAs to start and do just about anything. I always say, when you learn how to hire your team, learn how to hire VAs, it, it eliminates any excuse that you can ever come up with why you can't do something, why you can't can't build what you want to build. All you got to do is just know how to hire the right people, right? Bring the right team in. So probably about six months ago, I, again, accidentally started a tutoring business without trying to start a tutoring business. I hired a VA. To, to, I started homeschooling my son. So I hired a VA to tutor my son and help with his homework and everything, right? Um, and the VA was killing it. Next thing you know, Derek hit me up and said, hey, Ken, can I use the tutor to help DJ? Uh, a couple other friends, hey, can I use the tutor to help tutor my son? And I made probably about $2,000 a month just using the one tutor that I had tutoring my son and let them tutor their kids a few hours a week, bro. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you literally can create any business that you want to build and create, right, by, by, hiring, by hiring VAs, right, and solving your own issue. And everybody else around you more than likely have the same issues, and you just use your team and let them go and solve the other person's issues and get paid for it. This right? is incredible. Um, same way, if you got a couple of VAs that's doing, let's say, your social media for you. You say you got a social media team doing graphics, one doing your social media management, one running your ads. You may be spending about $2,000 a month on all three VAs, right? That's cool. But what do I be able to find four or five other entrepreneurs in this room that need the same as that service? All I have to do is charge them $1,000, $15,000 a piece each month. Now, that's a whole $6,000 a month business with me not doing anything but using the same team I already have and pairing them up with you, pairing them up with them, and they paying for it. And I never had to come out of my pocket paying my VA salary because y'all paying, it, paying for it for me. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm making profit every, every month, right? Wow. So once you learn how to hire a VA for yourself and for your own business, every other business that's similar to yours, they need the exact same thing on the back end. And they just outsource. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's my question. How do you hire the right ones? And I always, and maybe it's my error in being able to communicate, I have a hard time, except for the two that I have, I have a hard time explaining to them what I need and why what they're giving to me isn't right. I don't know how to. What about the ones my, that you already have? Why are they understanding? Why are they good? I don't know. They just, they just good. They figured that they're good. So that's the, mis that's the missing link. You ain't research why. And so once you figure out why, you can duplicate that. So the thing is, like if that means answer. if they naturally have it, they should be leading everybody else. And, and, and a lot of times we may hire somebody and try to have them fill a role that they're not necessarily great at, right? When we hire people, we got to let them utilize what they're best at, what, what, their, what their best skill, and have them do that. But they always um, say, whatever you need, I'm the best at. <laughs> and Am that, I right? You got disc assessments. You got yes. uh, you got a bunch of tests uh, that that you can actually assess them before you hire them. Um, and then and wait, hold on, first of all, will y'all get me somebody that got a college degree? I want somebody educated. Yeah, that's that's cool, but that's a lot of them do a hell of a job without having a college. degree. And a yeah. lot of them with college degrees <laughs> suck too. Some of them. Yeah. Word. I mean, it's just like here. You know, the first person is, I'm, I could build a business. I got a degree. Like, the degree got nothing to do with you building a business. Yeah. But uh, training and development is, is key, though. Okay. So, do you help with the training and development? I'm Listen, I want to build out a, a podcast staffing agency. Not podcast staff. Maybe I'm saying mm -hmm. that wrong. A podcast production agency. I don't know how to hire, though. I don't know how to train. I don't know... I know how to do that stuff. The first thing is, and this is this is with any company. The first thing is understanding like what are the different. If I build out a podcast agency, right? What are the different departments within that agency, right? Just like any company, right? Um, most companies are made of four different departments: marketing, sales, um, uh, your, your 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 process and operation, and your customer service, right? But with your podcast agency, break this company down to different departments, right? Mm -hmm. Marketing, sales, whatever. Uh, Pre pre production, editing, post production, customer service, like whatever whatever that looks like for you. Break your company down to different departments, and then what you want to do is start listing down all of the tasks and duties for each separate department, right? Because um, the ultimate goal is to bring people in that can that can run each department, right? 
um, so that you can slowly back yourself away from the whole company and it's running on its own without you. And that's the first mistake most people make. They don't. I'm I'm sorry. You're you're saying bring in a VA to manage so other VAs in a particular. Yeah. Role? So the first thing I would do is take your company or your concept, break your company down into different departments. Yes. Right. So we got four says, departments. Four different departments. Okay. Right. The first thing that you want to do is, of course, you want to hire some operation manager or executive assistant, right? That that can that you can train and that understands the day to day operations of the whole company, right? Um, that knows the duties and roles of each different department, right? Um, and then and then you want to start filling those departments with the VA. So you got four different roles. Essentially, you're gonna have an operation manager. You may have one or two VAs in each department, right? Um, and so with that being said, that's going to be your team for your whole your whole company. So you don't have to do the different stuff in each department. You got your operation manager that's managing all your other team members, right? Making sure that they're doing what they need to be doing. You got different VAs in each department that are doing what they need to be doing. And now you're bagging yourself away from the whole operation, from all the day to day where you don't have to focus on it because your operation manager is down there running the whole company and managing all your team members for you. But the first, the first thing, first mistake we make is not breaking our company down to different departments, got not it. listening down to different tasks. Once we do that, then we got to start to create SOPs and processes and instructions for each task that's need to be done in each department, mm -hmm. right? And once you do that and start bringing different people in, it makes it easier for them to get their role done because they can see instructions. They can see the SOPs. They know what must be done. Even if you let that person go and bring somebody else in, they still got instructions and SOPs for each thing and each test that needs to be done and when it needs to be done. And that's the first mistake we make, not doing that, not having the instruction, not having the SOPs, and then not try to bring a VA in and say, hey, I want you to do everything in my sure. company. Mm -hmm. Now nah, you need to do this in this particular department. You need to be do this in, in the sales department. You need to do that, right? So that's, that's, that's the first mistake that we normally make when we try to hire somebody. Got it. Um, okay. You got anything on that? No, I was just going to say they naturally going to avoid the hard work. <laughs> yeah. And take the path of least resistance to the easy work. Even so the VAs? That anybody in, the, in, in this world. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So if you can get four people for the per, for the price of one here, then now you got four people that's focused on one thing versus one person focusing on four everybody. things that's gonna yeah. ignore three and take the path of least resistance to the to the easy job. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So now you're dividing the work like you got four divisions. But the problem is your first employee you bring it in from the US, you're gonna try to have them doing all right. four. They're going to take the easy job. And they're going to always say, hey, Dave, I got this done. You're going to be like, what, every, what, what about everybody? You know, everything else. They're going to be like, well, I'm going to get to it. But now you got one person you can go to if the marketing didn't get done. Hey, why didn't the email get out? Who doing the outreach to the guests? It should be one VA, 100% sending all the consent forms out, talking to the people, making sure that they get there. That's their whole job. One person uploading and, and doing the captions and all that, that's their whole job. Yeah. That way, if anything is missing, you can point to a person. Gotcha. But now, if anything is missing with that one person, they're going to be like, well, but I did everything else good. And you're going to be like, all right, I can, I can let you off the hook. Yeah. But now your business failing. Okay. So the people that you're helping get into, like, so for, for me, right, are you giving me your VAs to where you make the money in between or you're teaching me how to go find my own? So um, I do both, right? So with my company, we got two different services. One um, we can hire the VAs, we can train them, and we can manage them. When I say manage them, making sure they show up every day, clock in, clock out. We handle the payroll. We handle the insurance benefits, um, everything for them. At any point of that working for you and you ever say, hey, I need to replace this VA or she's not working out, we'll replace them for you with a new VA um, at any time. Um, you got your own client success manager, reach out to you every week, check in, make sure you're good. Um, so that's our management service. So with that, Yes, I make money in between. Yeah, I'm paying the VAs four dollars an hour. You're paying me ten dollars an hour. Makes sense, right? Uh, for all the management. Then the other service is a direct hire service where you'll pay me a one-time fee of about fifteen hundred. We'll find the VA. We'll make sure they're good to go, and I pair them up with you, and you manage them and pay them on your own without me being the middleman. Mm. Right. So those are two different services. Most times, that's for people that's already got VAs already, already used to managing a team, already know how to, um, you know. Don't necessarily need us to be the middleman. But um, for most people that don't have time to manage that VA, that don't know what they're doing, they want us to manage and do everything for them. Got it. Okay. They've even reached out 
and and to hit me and was like, hey, such and such ain't doing their job. We're going to go ahead and fire them next week. Um, <laughs> you know, cut their access next week. We'll have somebody else. I was like, what? What they did wrong? Because you, you ain't watching. Right. You ain't watching. And yeah. they watching for you. We watch. We do time tracking. Uh, we can monitor their, 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 their the screen, the website, see what they, what, they, what they not doing, see if they clocking in late. Do everything for you. And a lot of times... We, we give you a phone call every single week from our team to check in. Hey, how's it going this week? How's your VA working out? Any changes or anything that you need help with? We reach out to you every week. So every week, we either catch any issues that you have and get on top of it, better coach the VA or train the VA or replace them. Um, or if we notice anything on our end, we'll let you know before you you know it. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, for sure. listen, I know you ain't, ain't complaining, but we, we see something and we feel like the VA needs to improve in this or we feel like we may need to replace them with somebody else. Right, we let you know ahead of time, right? Wow. Um, so that comes with all of the management. Okay. Right? Well, let me ask you this. Do you ever – so the VAs that you get, is it is it predominantly word of mouth? Like you know your VA's got some cousins that do some work, yeah. or do you have some sort of secret sauce that you're not going to tell me how to get my own? No, no, no. I got a, got a bunch of secret sauce. So, of course, you want to hire your own VAs. I give you – Go to online jobs. You can go to Facebook communities, right? Go to Facebook groups. Type in anything similar to work from home VAs, VAs Philippines. You'll see groups come up with hundreds and thousands of VAs in it looking wow. for a job. Wouldn't them take two, three dollars an hour, right? You could say virtual assist, podcast virtual assistants Philippines. A whole group will come up with number of podcast VAs in it that specialize in podcasting, oh, wow. right? And you can do that for any industry. So those are two ways you actually go and find find you your. Are you checking right now? I saw it in your face. <laughs> let She's me like, <laughs> let me know how many members that group say that. Whatever, whatever group you find. Right. <laughs> right. Goodness. So Christ. you can do those two things, and then actually just post your job. They'll reply, um, and you just start your interview process from there. Um, but I also have relationships with universities in the Philippines that send us interns to come work. Mm. I also have relationship with some mayors in the Philippines. We actually do live job fairs in the Philippines. Mayors? Mayors. Oh, wow. Mayors in the Philippines. And if you go to my page, you'll see job fairs that we do in the Philippines that, with lines of hundreds and hundreds of VAs lined up to be interviewed, right? Oh, my goodness. And it benefits the mayor because we're giving jobs to their constituents, sure. right? And it makes them look good, of course, and they give us the resources and everything we need to actually find the staff members. But also... We do a thing we call bonus stacking, and that really attracts a lot of VAs. So bonus stacking is where we'll pay them their regular salary, let's say it's $5 an hour, but then we also stack bonuses on top of it. So you'll get a monthly performance bonus, a monthly attendance bonus, and this is like $25 bonuses. You'll have, you, you got health insurance, <laughs> which is about gracious. $300 a year, but that's broken down monthly, so it's about another $20 a month. We also give grocery bonuses sometimes. That's about $25 a month. So you stack all these small bonuses up. That only adds up to about $100, $125 a they month. They live But mm-hmm. to them, it's like, dang, I get paid my salary. Plus, I got all these extra bonuses. <laughs> it looks good uh, when, they're actually, uh, when you're actually posting the job. Outside of that, we do a lot of other things to attract VAs and have them actually market and promote our company. So we send out, we do, we send out welcome kits. The welcome kit has shirts, T-shirts, snacks in it. Mouse pads, keep, and we also get them company IDs, and that's what most people don't do. Wow. And with this company ID, they wear it around their neck proudly. They talk about you. They promote you to all their friends. They wear your T-shirts <laughs> around there. Well, they're really proud to have a job. Wow. Right? Um, and then with that company ID, you can go out and get loans. All right? You can go and apply for um, auto loans. Uh, we do because you have a company ID. Company because ID you sh- it shows you have a job. Shows mm-hmm. you have a job. Plus, we give pay stubs too. Unlike what most people do when they pay their VAs, we go so they take the, the the pay stubs, they take the company ID, and they're able to go and get loans from the banks. So just with that small thing, it attract VAs to go want to work for our company. Well, you figure this thing <laughs> out, bro. Because um, nobody else is doing that. On birthdays, we send birthday cakes. B- birthday cakes only seven dollars to order a cake for your staff. So every, every birthday, everybody get a birthday cake sent to them. So small things like that, they take pictures, they promote you, and you're the best company in the world to work for because you sent a birthday cake because you get them an ID because you're giving them a $25 bonus. Right? Oh, my god! And gosh. most people don't think about that. That goes a long way in the Philippines. Yo, look, real, I don't know if this has anything to do with anything, but like when pol- when politicians start talking about bringing, back to jo- bringing jobs back to the United States, what do you th- – like? What's your position? Because you understand why Nike goes over <laughs> to make a shoe for $3. I, I, and I understand why Chase Bank is, every time you call Chase Bank, it's somebody in the Philippines that's answering. Oh. 
right? right? All their customer service is done. Netflix, Zero. All these other companies are over there. That's how they're billion dollar companies. When you think about it, um, the biggest expense for business owners most time goes out to payroll, right? But if you can cut your payroll down, <laughs> right, half or, you know, one fourth or whatever, you're able to save money. And the more money you save, the, the more profit the company is making, right? So that's how these companies are making these billions and billions of dollars on, I wouldn't say cheap labor. Well, it is cheap labor, right? Um, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah so cheap labor. For cheap sure. labor, but everybody's happy in the process still, but yeah. Yo, man, I, uh, we're good, y'all. Trust me. Zell, I know it took you a little while to edit, but you, we're going to get there. Okay? We're going to get there. Because if not, <laughs> I'll call Ken. Yo, can you get to my edit video in the next couple hours? I love you, Zell. Um, um, oh, so, so you, you, you understand. But it does, it does cripple the country, though. Yes? No, it forces us to level up. So it's just like the same, what about before the computer era when they was telling you if you didn't learn how to have a computer or use a computer, you, you won't That's have a, a job. A so fact. the people who was like, oh, computer's the devil, they don't have a job. They got left in poverty. So now it forces you to, now I, I really think if we, we understand that this, the world is built on entrepreneurship, it's mm -hmm. forcing us to be what we're supposed to be anyway. Now it's an easier path to entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because if you're working a nine to five and making thirty dollars an hour and you can't start your business, you know what I'm saying. So like, let's say if I'm making thirty dollars an hour and I, and I, I don't want to leave because I got benefits. Mm -hmm. Now instead of leaving, I can go ahead and sacrifice five dollars an hour because th that forty hours is being spent. And instead of me having to leave my nine to five to spend it, I can actually have a VA doing it, True. research True. and development and all that. I got a hundred people on my research and development team. And all they do is research and develop. And they find people who want to sell their business. They find people who want to buy. You can easily broker. They find the weaknesses. They find everything about a business if I want to buy. They find everything about a market that hasn't been tapped into yet. They can build courses. They can research anything, right? And so if a person's making $30 an hour and hire a research and developer for whatever business they're trying to start, instead of buying a course, your research and developer done built the course for you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? They done wow. built the step-by-step. -step. Mm -hmm. So it's... Literally, I, I think the whole next 10, 15 years, people are not even going to be able to afford employees in the U.S. They're going to force the, you know, the minimum wage to go up. But you got to also realize now, am I going to be forced to pay somebody $20 an hour at the risk of going out of business when I got a kid to feed? Or do I just go and get a VA? Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and I think it's helping more people, like you say, helping more people start businesses and get into entrepreneurship, yeah. knowing that they can literally go and hire somebody today for three dollars an hour, don't have to pay that person until thirty days from now, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So now you now you can start that whole business with little to no um, money out of pocket, really, right? Um, knowing you can hire a VA, so now more people are starting businesses versus more businesses closing because they can't afford to, to, to pay that staff. Man. Sure. How much time we got though? Because it seems like. As they become more popular, the more money we have to pay. And maybe it's not going to be a jump from $3 to $12, but. Well, AI, about, it's, it's about to go into the AI wave, too. It's going to start replacing them. So they're going to have to start competing with AI for prices. 70% <laughs> of call centers are going to get replaced with AI, and we're talking from the Philippines. And that's the Philippines. Yeah. Why is the Philippines such a hot area for. Well, they, they education system is in English. And not only that, they number two in the world when it comes to um, the literacy rate. Um, really? Ninety-seven percent literacy rate, number two in the world. Most people don't know that. When you're in the Philip, and, and it's really the only country where, when you're in the Philippines, you're riding down the street. Every sign is in English, no other language. Right? It's the only mm. country where everything is in English. <laughs> so why do they speak broken English so much? S some of us speak broken English now. Oh, not just that. Not the one you about to give me. The one we only we only hire people that speak great English. We hire nobody with, with, that that can't speak and communicate well. Oh, None wow. of that they have to be client facing. That's one right, of the things. Sign that makes, me up, bro. All right, so it's sorry. like this, David. If you in a room where everybody's like successful, mm -hmm. it's a certain language that they speak. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? For sure. So if you're hiring people that speak great English already, they're talking to people who speak great English. You know, but if you go to the trap, you ain't really thinking about hiring them for. You know what I'm saying? So if they aren't really focusing on education and they dilate is different. 
you're not really thinking about bringing them on in the first place, yeah. right? So once you start hiring people that speak great English, they going that's all they're talking to is people who talk like them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sign me up, bro. I need I, I, accent, I need you. He built a thing where they got accent, accent reduction, reduction training. So if yeah. the ones even that got an accent, they might speak good English, but they got an accent. Accent to reduce reduction the accent. training. So we we, we yeah. built a whole training. So we got a whole training portal that we train all the VAs through over sixty some training videos, SOPs. But one of the trainings is called accent reduction. Right. So if you do have an accent, and of course, and here's the thing: most people that you hire with the accent, you 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 can pay them lower. Maybe a dollar, two dollars an hour, right? The better yeah. English they speak, the more you got to pay. And so, they know that. And they know that. Yeah, so if know. I bring somebody in with the who English isn't that great, we put them through a whole accent reduction training for a couple of weeks up to a, a month or so, and they learn to reduce that accent and sound more American, right? This so I'm able to hire more people, train them to speak better, and not have to pay so much in, in salary. Why? And I learned, and I learned that from Chase Bank. When I was in the Philippines. Yeah, but why Chase don't put they come they people through accent reduction? Yeah. I'm like, huh? What? Act. Well, no, the ones that's on the Lord, the first yeah. people you talk to, the, them the dollar hour people. Yep. When you get escalated and say, I want an American, and they're going to transfer you, you're going to think you got an American. Oh, I, I, we know. You know what? So I, I was just talking to Chase last week, and I was like, I want an American. And you got on the phone, and I'm like, ah, you was good. That one word. Yeah. I know it. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I didn't heard enough wow. of y'all talk. I got it. But, you know, I laugh because the average person, if you didn't do it, you know, yeah. the average person wouldn't know, though. For sure. It's like, yeah, you definitely not in the U.S. I was just laughing, though. Goodness gracious. So the the one where you hire and find the VA, that's one service. But I thought you said you had, like, a whole nother. Is that the business in the box? The so, one? Yeah, so the business in the box program is where we – Build a whole VA agency out for you. Turn it oh, over to you. You build the agency out for them. I build a whole. We build a whole VA staffing agency out. Everything you need to start staff and automate the whole business. How much is we, that? The, it's three thousand dollars. The, the build it out for you. Here's the thing. Three thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, no, it was. It was more. It, it yeah. was more than that at first. He automated right? it. It was more than that. I just charged fifteen thousand um, dollars for that, and I kind of automated, did some stuff different. I reduced the price, but here's the thing: I reduced the price. And you pay, you can pay a monthly fee for us to um, to have our monthly support. But also, what that does is, once we turn the business over to you, you specialize in a certain niche or industry. All the clients that are coming in from us, we pass the clients over to you, and I take a percentage on the back end from all the clients we send over to you. I right, say it again. Say it one more time. One more time. I was still <laughs> stuck on the three thousand. So, so the re- yeah, I, I no 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 yeah. lie, no no cap. I was. At least twenty something thousand dollars. That's what I'm thinking you're about to say to me. It, it, was. it was right. It was. We used to build it out, turn it over to you for that high price. Yeah. But now what we do is we drop the price, yep. right? And we make sure that if you're gonna start an agency, we make sure that you specialize in a certain niche or industry. Podcasting, right? friends. Podcasting. Okay. So any clients that hit us up, book an appointment, and they need VAs to help with podcasting. Instead of me servicing those clients, I would say, hey, you can go over to our, one of our certified agencies. Um, he specializes in VAs for podcasting. I would send all the clients over to you. So if you, you're charging a client $2,000 a month, I take about 20% on the back end. So mm. I get paid from every client that I send you. Ah, so if a client's with so if a client's with you for three years, you're giving me three dollars $400 a month for three years for that one client. That makes right? sense. So I made money on the back end, now, even though the price is lower. Right? And everybody's happy. I'm no longer competing with you guys. right? And I'm sending clients, sending clients to you. And the client is able to be serviced the right way because you specialize in that niche or the industry. Dang, that's hard. No, it's dope. Golly. Equity, baby. Equity. Equity play, of course. You told me that. That's one reason I dropped it down. He's like, Ken, drop it down and start getting equity in all the clients. Well, because most people who got 25 on the front end, you 25 in. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But also, when he was doing it for the 25, it was all of his time that he was spending. All of those recorded, and they already yeah. in the database. Now, he don't have to do it again. All of the Q&As are in there. All of the trainings. You pr- I think you got accent reduction training in all, in, in all of them, right? Yeah. So all of the trainings are all in there. So it's equipped to where your VA would come in, and even if you had a, v, uh, a podcast agency VA, they won't have to come in and onboard. Everything is there. The onboarding, the SOPs, like everything is there. The system, the software. The, um your whole recruitment process and funnel, your your sales process, 
the, the phone system that you made the calls with. Everything is built into the system already. <laughs> so right. what's the process of actually bringing the VAs into the company? Um, or is that, is that the training that you're teaching me how to do that? Or are you, because if you're running an agency, if, okay, let's so, say I'm doing the, 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 the business in a box, right? Mm -hmm. And you're helping me run the agency. Do I have, are you teaching me how to go get the VAs or you have some already? No. So I teach you, of course, how to go and hire your VAs, but you can have my team do all the recruitment for you. So I you see. ain't got to recruit nobody. I recruit the best VAs. All you have to do is get the clients. I recruit the best VAs for you. I pair the VAs up. We'll do the onboarding. We'll do the meet and greet. We'll let them meet your clients for you. And of course, I get paid on the back end for every VA I recruit. So you ain't got to have a recruitment team. You ain't got to worry about that. Let us handle that for you. Right? Mm. Let us send out the, all the VAs to you. Let us interview the right ones. Make sure they're trained. Let us do the onboarding between your client and the VA. Let us do the whole process. You just get the clients. Um, like so that's, that. one, that's one option. And if you don't want to pay a back end fee for all the VAs we get you, you can do it on your own. It's an option you got. If you, what do you mean? So if, you, if, if, if every VA that I send you, right, mm -hmm. of course you have to pay on the back end for all the VAs that we send, yeah. that I send you and pair up with your clients. But if you don't want to do that, you can just hire and recruit on your own. Gotcha. And don't have to worry about paying me anything. But yeah. you, got, you got an option. So we can do everything for you. Right, you just bring the clients in. We'll do everything: the recruitment, the pairing up, um, the training, the offboarding, the onboarding. We'll do everything with the VAs for you, so you don't have to do it. So they're mm. still managing the VAs as if they would a regular staffing company, too, right? Right. And so, you, he's also talking about when the client comes, like uh, just say a podcast person hit him up and say, "I want, I want a VA." He'm like, "No, David, it's a certified VA staffing company." I'm so a he was saying, VA staffing company. So once you go through the training, oh, you will be sounds. listed as a certified. That way, you you can refer people to you and take that twenty percent on the back end. So let's say if you let's and say teach me how to give them insurance and all that kind of stuff. Too. It's all in the training. It's all in the there. onboarding. I mean, it's all in the whole business in a box. Yeah. Offer not, letters, everything. Not only is it in there, I got a whole. We use this company, and y'all y'all can do it on your own as well. It's called Mexicare. M A S I C A R E Mexicare. So if you got VAs, you can sign them up for Mexicare. Right, insurance. But we have a we have a rep that comes in like every week and he's on standby in case any NL dementees need to reach out to the insurance rep and get their VA signed up. So they mm. actually come in, do the calls, go over the pricing, go over everything with all the mentees every so often. Hold on, I gotta ask you, is Mexicare your company? <laughs> I wish. I, if I, I could buy it, I should. Like, yeah, it, 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 it ain't my look. company. But, the whole company. Like. <laughs> nah, it, it, it ain't our company, but just like most insurance rep, they get you know yeah. you get a, get a, uh, get paid a little bit. <laughs> I ain't mad. I ain't mad at that, Playboy. I ain't mad. The rest of Dallas. Yeah. Twenty dollars. Okay. No. Okay. Um, okay. I, I. I. This is. This is very. But it's, very it's like the most recession-proof business in the world. Yeah. Because you can make money just with an idea with a VA. Like, instantly, like sitting around, you can say, hmm, I want to have a VA learn how to edit videos, right? And then they edit in podcast videos. Oh, I got a social proof podcast studio where I can rent it out and it comes with the whole package with editing and everything. Now my VA that just edits for me edits for everybody now. And then uh -huh. now you got monthly packages. You can incorporate the VAs, outreach, everything. You know, so literally just an idea. You can think of something. That's how I did with the websites. It's like, hmm, such and such websites suck. You get what I'm saying? Yes. And then now, hey, do the research on the website. If they search top 10, whatever, you never going to run out. You got Chicago. You got New York, Atlanta, small cities, right? Nobody has websites, right? And I'm not even a web developer, and I make millions off of it. And that's just an idea. And I was sitting on the toilet, and I thought about that. You <laughs> I'm just... I get where you're going. I mean, you know. The whole toilet. <laughs> toilet millionaire. That's what I'm going to rebrand my now. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. Yeah. But now you can really, man, like, it's nothing out here that you can't make money off. Like, he got equity in a restaurant. Yep. So. Where? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it was this vegan spot in the West End. It was this little vegan restaurant. Um, they, was, they was only open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They couldn't be open on the rest of the days. They didn't have enough traffic. Mm. Um, they didn't have people to answer the phones. They wasn't even on. Um, they wasn't even on Grubhub or, or Uber, right? 
uh, Uber Eats. They weren't on, really on none of that stuff. So I've reached out to them. Uh, well, I used to go down and eat all the time. I noticed, like, dang, I keep coming on Tuesday and Wednesday. Y'all closed. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Well, we ain't got the staff. We ain't got the people coming in. So I put together um, a team for them, um, and they start open, being able to open up their doors on other days because of the marketing. They had somebody answer the phones for them, and they gave, they gave me a little revenue share in it just from mm -hmm. building the damn team for the restaurant. But you can do that with just about anything. And you we offer the service for ghost kitchens because ghost kitchens usually don't have a phone number. Yeah. And then now all of the ghost kitchens that we serve is talking to somebody in the Philippines. They ordering their stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's just a phone service that they call in through the ghost kitchen. You know, because a lot of people ain't going to order it through Uber Eats or Grubhub. And they, you know, if they get a chance to call in, the ash was on the menu, can you special order, blah, blah, blah. Now you got a phone service for them. I am in awe. Yeah. I've been doing mad stuff wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really, yeah, I, I okay, I, I, I for sure need help with this because um, it seems like you have somebody that isn't going to cost you a whole lot, but they're extremely motivated to help you really build out your business. And it's almost like you can get a few people to do the job that one person would do because this is their, they ain't even trying to be lit. They probably ain't mm -hmm. on the gram. Anybody who firing somebody in the next 30 days or getting rid of them, replace them with a team. So it's it's person for team. That's why I love the whole VA concept. Yeah. Get rid of the customer service person and bring a customer service team in. Four people at 40 hours a week is 160 hours of labor versus one person doing 40 hours. The average person don't work, but 30% of their shift. So you hiring a person at 40 hours, paying a person at 40 hours who really doing about 15 to 20 hours of work. But then now they're going to actually do 160 hours of work if you can keep them gainfully employed for the same amount of money. That's how you grow four times. You people like they want to grow, but you grow based on the labor that you got. Growing. Bro, this is all making sense to me. I I was doing I did an episode with Hala Taha, and I was asking you know how you like get up on these these podcast charts and stuff like that. She mm -hmm. said that she has VAs literally nonstop just DMing people like check out this podcast, check oh, out this podcast, oh, check that's out this podcast. The easy part. Like it's just like yo check it out, and you know some people don't, but some people will <laughs> check it out and they're aware of it. Because most people use an automation and it sound like a bot. But if now I got hit you in the inbox, hey, yo, yo, David, what's up, man? I need to holler at you. Now, and it's for me. You're going to yeah. be like, oh, D, what's up, my man? 90% of the people who hit me up on social media are talking to my VAs. And they talk. So now I can even urbanize the way they talk. See if I sent you a DM. And <laughs> no, I mean, maybe not you, but I know a lot of people. But maybe. Yeah, but if it's on Facebook and Instagram, 90% of the like, time. Yeah, what's up, bro? You're like, yo, what's good, bro? That's exactly what they'll do. No, for real. King, queen, they love the whole king, queen thing. They'll follow and they up. They're going to talk and act just like you, too. Yeah. Because their job to is way. to go look at my history and how I talk to people. Yeah. Look up. First thing, if you inbox me, I got them trained to like scroll all the way up and see how the conversation started. Because I don't want you to be like, hey, sir, Mr. Harper. And like, that's my brother. That's my cousin. Like, You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So now you, they can scroll up and they study the conversation. And then so, they hit you up, you like, yeah, I'm definitely talking to Derek. Yo, Derek, yeah. when I text you, bro, do you be hitting me back or is it? <laughs> on text, yeah. Okay, Depends. Right. So on my number, but the number that everybody else got, it might not be. Yeah, I feel like Derek's going to come up with a way. I call him, and he's like, hey, bro. Like, hey, yo, this I, is, nah, is this Derek? Yo, this is amazing. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. Help me. Help yeah. me. Bro, he anybody need help? He mapped out a whole plan yeah, for you. Yeah. Sure. He mapped out a whole plan for you, bro. I don't know if you want to give Did it. You? you want him to give it to you online. No, no not, not right not. here. Okay. Yeah. No, we're gonna go to eat. Yeah. But y'all vegan. It's called podcast is it though. But we'll you talk vegan? about you vegan? Yeah. Vegetarian. I can't go out with y'all. Vegetarian. Unless we go somewhere I that's not vegan. Y'all just be all over the place. I could do y'all over vegan. No, I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian at all. I'm but you're not into four o'clock. I'm just fast. I got so many rules around y'all situation. No, I'm good. Anywhere I go, I can get a salad. I'm good. All right. So yeah, I'm good. I can get a smoothie or something so, until what? four. Okay. Yeah. All right. Say so, less. Yeah. So so one of the other things, and he don't brought, tell them my idea on here. No, I'm no, not yeah, gonna because yeah. okay, I'm offered this next week. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all see this ad? Yo, we got the podcast agency. Okay, we can edit your videos. Say less. That is yeah. man. There's more than just editing. Like literally, Finding every producing. Day. Pro yeah, yeah, for sure. Timestamps and all that. Right. It's up, bro. So your podcast that you showed me, mm -hmm. they're running the whole thing. They literally, 
I'm talking about everything from the making sure that the consent forms is in. They do the research on the people and give me a whole cue card thing by the time <sighs> no I more sauce. This yeah. is a oh, okay. okay. I was like, so, <laughs> hey, I have I have the whole background on, on the stage people. next year. Yeah. Podcast on it. Like, so man. one of the, one of the whole real course he started a podcast because he wanted a podcast. But one of the biggest reasons he started the podcast was so he can build out the we can build out the concept. Yeah, <laughs> and perfect. <laughs> just process. testing it. Are y'all trying to get in my space? <laughs> no. Y'all need to not sign up for you. My, one thing about it, so one okay. thing about it is I'm not ever competing with nobody, mm-hmm. right? And I give you your props. You motivated me. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't until you were the first person who invited me to, to a podcast and social. People was inviting me, but I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Like, I want you on my show. I'm like, what show? Because I'm just a goofball mm-hmm. who just know how to make money and, and, and I can sit home and do it. And I'm an introvert. So I was like, man, you mean to tell me it's like being on TV and stuff? Like, no, I don't want to. And so you hit me up at the clubhouse, and you was like, bro, you want to come on and just talk to me? I was like, I guess, yeah. And then I didn't realize the power of podcasting until that was my first million dollar day after yours. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I might want to get into sure. it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Definitely no, 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 no competing. I always tell people this too. Like, you definitely helped me dive deep into entrepreneurship. You went there at the first time I ever been to a conference or an event, mastermind, anything. I went there was the first one and yours was the second one oh, that wow. you did over in um what what up? Kansas region we met. No, yeah. it was double tree when you did the uh t shirt the, uh, oh, yeah, Se- six figures in fashion. It was like twenty sixteen like or yeah. whatever. And Kansas region, me and you met. Yes, because you had hired me to do something to speak at your event or something no, like that. No, before so and that's how that's how you he know, said it up. Yeah, that, no yeah. I'm no, he set up a meeting with me between and y'all two, right. and yeah. y'all met at some restaurant. What up? I always been been good at uh, relationships and making connections. <laughs> he was like, "Man, you got to meet this David dude." I was like, "Who this David dude?" And he kept saying, and he and uh, I was like, "I don't," because I, you know, I'm not a social media dude. Mm-hmm. I'm I was a Facebook dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, "Who the hell is this David dude?" He was like, "He'll speak." I was like. What, he say hey to people or whatever? <laughs> and, and he was like, this guy E.T. he weird. And I was like, you know, I ain't know none of it. Yeah. You know, so I was like, man, I was just in my little space doing my little thing. Yeah. And then, um, you know, he set it up. But then when we actually uh, kick, hung out, my wife, and, you know, you pulled up and shooting them was all out there. We met at like Wet Willis or something. We kicked. I was like, dang, I he cool. That. Yeah, yeah. And then we ended up going that. somewhere, some late night spot. Yep. And, you know, after yep. that, I was like, bro, you gotta, you need to speak at the Wealth Creek. Yes. And then you came, I and I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Incredible. This makes me feel good, real, really. Yeah, though. definitely. All right, so, yeah, because we, okay, we're about to wrap this up because we got stuff to talk about. <laughs> and, uh, yo, but, yo, thank y'all. Okay, so how do, how do people get it? Here's the thing. And when I ask people to come on, like, if you have a product or service, I typically ask if they can have, like, a social proof discount, but no, it don't that, seem like y'all charge it. No, that price is a social proof discount. Okay, that's, okay. Yeah. So that's social proof discount. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Is there a website? Yep, definitely a website. It's uh, uh, vastaffingacademy.com. Okay. That's how you get the bids in the box okay. program. Um, and my company, of course, is uh, ihrbuddy.com. International Human Resource Buddy dot com is that's what it stands for. Gotcha. Just give um, me the link. But for if it's social proof, is there a link for so they can get that discount or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I give you. I, I will just, I we'll put link. it in here. I get you the link. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is incredible, man. This is incredible. This is very helpful, right? And now everybody wants to start a little VA company. Everybody. You know got to if, they, if they start a VA company, I'm telling you, it's the best investment you can make. Yeah. Like if if you think of an idea. You can literally hire somebody even temporarily to fulfill the idea. Yep, you can not, do research for people. The, most of the money now is going to come from research and development. Because yep. people aren't paying for courses anymore. Gotcha. Right? Um, and I'm not bashing people who do courses. People just, they used to can pay for courses with, hey, I got my PPP approved or EIDL. Now they're paying for courses with 20 hours of labor. Yeah. So now it's like, all right, I don't really know no course. But now... Think about instead of spending 20 hours of labor, if you're making $34 an hour, I got a person making $5 an hour doing research the whole time. Yeah. So now, remember, one of the things that you said that I even be telling my people, most people ain't going to leave their 9 to 5. You shouldn't leave their 9 to 5 until it's getting in the way right. of the business. Because now if you ain't maximizing your time outside of work, Correct. you get what I'm saying, then all you're going to do is spend more time at Walmart, right? right. But if you got that VA there, now you're coming in on second shift of a business that's already been running when you get off your nine to five. And so now you can take it in. They just set up all your sales, and then now you knock your sales calls out from five to nine. 
And they done set up everything. They've been DMing people like, hey. And the way that they do that is, hey, I only got 5 o'clock available today to talk or 5.30 my schedule is booked. Have your schedule out. Make everything before 5, you know, 5 p.m. seem booked up. So now when you get off at 5 from 5 to 9, now you're doing sales calls because they think that you've been on sales calls all day, but they've been setting up those. They've been DMing people, been talking to them, having the conversation. So they don't even know you really got a nine to five. They think they've been talking to you, but they've been talking to VAs that you train to get them. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Hey, Kay, we're going to need some VAs running this clubhouse, like the bookings and reaching out to people that want to do events and stuff like that. Right. I made 100 k so- on my podcast before the first episode aired, bro, because of my VAs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodness. So yeah, so one of the thing, one of the ways I, I was able to grow my company so quick, I got two VAs, VAs that do it now. But at first I had one VA and they only job was to find 150 businesses every single day. Scout, find find different businesses, list now name, number, email address, phone number, website, everything of the business. That was her only job all day long. Once you collect that 150 people, um, the first half of your shift, the second half of your shift, you need to DM, call. Reach out to all these different business owners, tell them about the services, the program, and they did 150 every single day. They was at least to get like 15 or 20 people that actually booked an appointment. Wow! And out of that, we we closed. But that's her job all day long, and that's something that anybody can do with a VA, no matter what industry they're in. Just lead lead generation. Um, the other thing is, a lot of us got ebooks and free lead magnets on our website. When somebody go there and download the free ebook, the first thing my VA do within the first five minutes. Reach out and get that person a call. Hey, we saw you downloaded a free ebook. Were you able to get it successfully? Oh, wow. Yes, I was. Yeah. Hey, what's the reason you, you went to the well? So are you looking for a VA? Would you like to book an appointment? Get on the call. Mm-hmm. That's their job all day long. Yeah. And most of us miss small things like that that can bring us in extra revenue. All you gotta do is pay somebody three, four, five dollars an hour to do it for you. Incredible. All right, man. We're this is this is <laughs> we gotta go. Okay. Look, y'all, thank y'all so much. Look, give him a round of applause, y'all. This is really, really good. Um we got to get out of here, but we will have uh, we'll have the link that will go directly to that discount, and they can they can check that out. But uh, I need this personally myself, and I appreciate y'all doing this because it's it's different than what a lot of entrepreneurs are doing, especially in the education space, because you are truly helping people build any business. It's not like any I have this business, and this is how I'm teaching you how to build this business, but you are the engine or the gas behind any business. Mm-hmm. So uh, we appreciate y'all, man. Uh, I need y'all both to give us a word of wisdom before we uh, get out of here. So Ken, take us out. Yeah, so um, I say whenever you're growing, starting anything, just know like you ain't got to have it all together. You ain't got to know how to do it all. But if you know how to hire and build the right team and, and right people to come in and help you get it done, you can build, do, start, and grow and scale anything that you can ever dream of. Step one, take a disc assessment to see where you're strong or where you're weak at. Mm-hmm. Step two, hire where you're weak at. You get what I'm saying? Do what you do best, delegate the risk. And a lot of people fail because they're trying to do what they're not good at. So that's the best thing I got. I love it. Listen, man, we can't close out no better than that. Listen, make sure you follow these gentlemen. We'll put their uh, links in here. Uh, make sure you follow them, talk to them, engage with them. Um, but uh, also go get you some social proof, meaning go build something and build it really, really big. But come back to your community and teach them how to do what you did. Okay, it's the only way our community grows. We are out of here. Peace. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.